Hi everyone, Mike Murphy here from Crosslake Technologies. Today I'll be doing a short video on doing source code imports into TFS using a tool that we wrote called TFS Util. On the agenda today, uh, I'll be talking a little bit about some of the challenges that we had while doing source code imports uh, into TFS and how we address those. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about branching and just specifically as it relates to uh, doing source code imports. Uh, if you have questions about uh, more detailed information about branching, we've got a video, up, so please check our website. And then finally, we'll be doing a demo of the TFS util application and doing a, a live uh, import into TFS. So to get started, uh, Crosslake Technologies, we are a Microsoft partner uh, for ALM. We help clients uh, deploy TFS uh, into their environment. Um, and more importantly, we look at the whole process from, from end to end, and TFS is a great tool to help uh, from, a, from a tool perspective. We look at the, the dev teams, how they're organized, product planning, and, and so on. So we really look at the whole picture and help uh, development teams get more efficient um, and help create better visibility across the organization. In doing so, we have uh, come across uh, a number of challenges, and, and I'll, I'll keep these specific to source code imports um, and some of the things that we've learned. Uh, essentially, uh, even within a particular organization, we, we were finding that their development teams use a lot of different tools and a lot of different processes, and that, that can be a challenge. Uh, we've seen from the uh, source code side that we're we're doing source code conversions for lots of different types of systems like VSS, SVN, uh, older versions of TFS, you know, some power builder, you know, even using just the file system as a source co source code control um, repository and you know probably half a dozen other systems that we've used uh, to to do imports. So, a lot of different sources for the source code. The other issue that we've run into a lot is that uh, the branching structure within their existing systems really aren't in a best practice state. We've we've seen that in some cases, you know, an, a particular application may have 200 plus branches, and that's because every time they make a, a hot fix or a code change, they they branch. Um, we've seen branches that are children of other branches, and just they just keep going, uh, d basically daisy chaining these these branches together. So, just a lot of different uh, scenarios where the branches really aren't in a best practice state, and we have a need to kind of clean that up as we do the uh, the import process. So, w some of the objectives that we had for doing lots of these source code imports, one is it had to be really quick and efficient and consistent, I guess, across all the different uh, imports that we're doing. Um, because we're doing so many, we just have to, it has to be a, a consistent process. It's got to be 100% reliable. You know, we can't afford to lose even a single file in the source code import. Um, and then, you know, bit for bit, it's got to be identical. No corruption, you know, going from the old system to the new system. The uh, as I mentioned in the earlier slide, lots of different tools out there, so we have to be able to do an import from any source code control system uh, into TFS. Uh, and then finally, uh, from a branching uh, perspective, we uh, need to be able to put the source code from in its ex existing state into uh, a more desirable or best practice branching uh, state at the same time. So those are our objectives anytime we do a, a new uh, source code uh, conversion. So to talk a little bit about branching, uh, TFS Rangers puts out a great uh, set of guidance for different types of branches and when to use one versus the other. Uh, and if, you, uh, if you've if you seen this, great. If you, if you haven't seen it, uh, please take a look. You, you just go out to the web and do a search for TFS Rangers and you'll, you'll find a lot of content. Uh, we had to... Uh, or had a desire to make sure that we have a, a common or a f a set of branching uh, structure that we go into a client for as the go in position and you know we can make tweaks um, as necessary from there but we felt it was important to have a branching structure that worked for most projects and then we'd make modifications from that as opposed to starting from something like this where you know you have to kind of pick uh, each time. So it provides some consistency. In most cases we find that, that our standard, standard branch 
works uh, works very well. So this is uh, the branching structure that that we recommend. Uh, this has a main branch, a development branch, of course, and then we have a lot of clients that have uh, commercial software, and they have uh, multiple releases in production and some of the clients are on on older versions so it really requires uh, a separate service and release branch for each uh, of the major releases and that that allows them to support those clients um, for a, on an ongoing basis the hotfix branch that you may see in, in some of the more complex branching uh, we felt that that can be done as part of the service branch um, you know the, the fewer branches you have the easier it is to manage the system so this is the, uh, the go-in mechanism or approach that we have for for standard branching. Um, I'll go ahead and jump into the uh, the demo. Now the uh, the TFS application that I'm mentioning is written in uh, using uh, Visual Studio 2010 and C Sharp. It's uh, it's got a SQL Server uh, backend, so SQL Server 2008 R2 uh, Express Edition, and uh, it's a utility to essentially take the source code that we have. And, and import it into TFS using the standard branching. The way that we accomplish that is we essentially pull the files out of whatever s source control system that we have um, and put them on the file system and then and then import them from there. So we can do the kind of the cleanup work that's necessary um, and then put them in uh, a structure that we uh, we want to get to. Now if I open my, uh, my file manager here uh, You'll see that I've done just that. I pulled the files out. Um, in this case, I was actually using TFS, but it doesn't really matter what your source system is, and pulled them out into a file structure and just called them v1, v2, and v3. And within here, I've got the branch um, that I'm going to be creating. So these are the files that are going to go into TFS. The other uh, directory here that you'll see is the source code or source import directory, and that is uh, just as a temporary location for doing some of the TFS uh, operations. So it'll copy the files there and then um, it will you know, check files in or delete, delete files or whatever it needs to do to, to get those into TFS. So I'm going to go ahead and load, uh, let's see, TFS util. This is what the application looks like. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to go create a demo project. So I've, I'm connected to TFS here and I need to create a new team project and I'm just going to call it demo. And I don't need a SharePoint site. And finished. So this is going to set up my project. And when this is complete, we'll just check the uh, source editor. OK, source code control. So as you can see, uh, it's not mapped, and we have uh, connected to it. The, really, the only thing in source code right now is the the standard, the built uh, process templates. Okay. Now, I've used TFS util before, and so it actually saves the settings um, each time I use it. It's uh, pointing to the source path for each of the iterations that we're going to run. And if I had more than three, I just put those in here. Uh, if I had more than ten. I would just use, uh, I've got an XML file that we can create to, to do uh, larger source imports um, greater than 10. Now, the label description here is each time it does this uh, check in for this particular sequence, it will apply a label uh, for that particular check in, and we can name it anything we want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a service and release branch for all three versions that I'm going to check in. And then this by default takes the label but I can override that and, and make this whatever I want this essentially um, is intended to be the directory name or the version number um, that we are are importing a couple of options that we have here we can pause between sequence so it would run sequence one and it would pause and then we could branch it manually if we wanted to to create uh, some unique uh, branches uh, it's going to remove the workspace after the files um, have been imported and and this process is complete. It's going to some cleanup. It's going to uh, create a main branch and directory for us. It's also going to do the dev branch for us as well. So that looks good. Uh, I need to tell TFS util where the project is. So I uh, click on that and point it to the project that we just created called demo. Click connect. 
Okay, so we're ready to go. Uh, now, when I hit process files, it's going to go process those files. It's going to uh, do sequence one and then iterate through sequence two and sequence three. And when it's complete, we'll go out and check uh, TFS. So it didn't take long. That's done. I'm going to go ahead and close out. Go back to TFS. And all I have to do is refresh. And you can see that uh, I created my main branch, uh, a dev branch. And then it, the version numbers here are associated with what we put in the tool. It also created a service and release branch for each of those. So the way to check to make sure that it put it in the right format is I'm going to click on main, uh, right click, branching, emerging, and view hierarchy. And you can see it, it put it in the right format. So I uh, just do a quick check here, version 1 versus version 3, do a compare, and I should see some differences in files, which I do. So that's pretty much it. This was a very uh, small project and it was very quick. Um, this, uh, this tool can handle much larger uh, projects and lots of different versions. We've used it uh, for gigs and gigs of, uh, of data uh, source code into the system uh, quite successfully. So that's a little bit of a, a, a demo of Cross Lake's uh, TFS util application. If you have any questions about it, uh, please feel free to give me uh, an email. Uh, my email is mikemu at crosslaketech.com or visit us on the web, crosslaketech.com. Thanks a lot.